Well, UK is the United Kingdom. All right, y'all ready? equation for uh, like radioactive decay when a sample was like doubling every 10 years. So this is typically more your science formula. Okay, but it actually is the same base formula as what financial complicate computations are going to use. So it's the same thing, but the letters are going to change. So you have this formula for continuously compounded growth. And you're gonna use this formula for term growth. Now, to get us on the same page of what we did last time, we're gonna work this first example with continuous growth, even though we already learned it last time, just to kind of get you thinking about it. So take a look at number one. It says, Sam is investing $800 into an account that earns 3% interest. Now, it says compounded monthly. That's new. But I want you to cut that space in half and put compounded continuously. If it says continuously, you're doing the top formula right here, which is A equals P e to the R T, which mechanically is exactly the same as the formula that we did last class. So let's review what those things stand for. Your A is the amount at the end of the time period. Your P is the starting amount. Your R is going to be the interest rate written as a decimal. And then T is the number of years. So can you look back at this equation and tell me how much is Sam's original amount that he's going to put down? 800, that's his principal. So do 800 E. Then the R is going to be the interest rate. Now remember last time we called this the constant of growth. Okay, but since it's money, we just have a word for that. It's the interest rate. So if it's 3%, you're not going to use 3. You're going to use 3% as a decimal, which will be 0.03. Okay, and the way that you get that is you're just going to move the decimal to the left twice. So I'm going to put 0.03. And then for my T, it's going to be how many years I wait. Okay, which it says how much we have after five years. That's right. Okay, and then from there, just like last time, you would put it into the calculator, see what that new value is. So you do that now, please. Yes, ma'am. Okay, 800. Where's the E? The division sign, so second divide. Then I'm going to go up to the 0 0.03 times 5. So my $800 would grow to $929.47. Okay, now because this is money, I'm just gonna do two decimals every time. But sometimes on your practice, it'll say to the nearest dollar or whatever. Okay, do we remember how to do that from last class? Okay, that's only for continuously compounded interest. No bank will ever give you that, though, because it earns money faster than if they only compound it a couple times a year. That is called term. So there are a couple different terms that come up. We'll look at several different options. But for this question, how often is it compounded? 
monthly. monthly. So on this side, we're going to work the question compounded monthly, which is new. Okay, we had already covered the other version last class. So if it's compounded monthly, instead of using the top formula, you're going to use this formula right here. So it's going to be A equals P1 plus R over N up to the N T. All of the letters, though, stand for the same thing. P is still the starting amount. How much does Sam still have? $800 to put down. One plus, my R is still my interest rate written as a decimal. So what will my R still be? Point zero 0.03. But then on bottom, you have a divide by N. So look back in the box. N is the number of times it's going to be compounded in one year. So if it's monthly, how many times would that be? 12. 12. So you're going to put a 12 here and a 12 here. Because do you notice that your N is in the formula twice? It's under the R and it's up top there. Then how many years are we going to wait? Still five. So now put that into your calculator and let's just compare the two, a monthly compounded interest compared to a continuously compounded interest. And you'll notice the answers are pretty close. Okay, you can see how I've typed it in here if you want to. You can use the little fancy fraction for the 0 0.03 over 12, but you don't have to. Okay, so it comes out to 9.29 and 29 cents, okay? So 9.29 and 29 cents. Okay, but the majority of your practice today is gonna be the second formula since we already covered the other formula and the other practice. Okay, so go down to number three. It says Mary invested $2,000 in an account seven years ago. The interest is compounded quarterly. How much will Mary have in her account now? I wrote this question. I forgot to put the interest rate. So I'm going to put interest of 6.3%, just so that all the details are there for us to do the question. All right, so I see compounded quarterly. That means I'm using which formula, the E or the one plus? One plus. So I'm going to write it down first. E one plus R over M, N to the T. What is the principle that Mary is going to start the account with? That'll be A equals 2,000, one plus. Now for my interest rate, it's 6.3%. I need to move the decimal two places to the left. So if I move it over, it's going to go in front of the six and then give me one more for 063. Are we good with that? So it'll be 0 0.063 divide by how many times per year if it's quarterly? How many? Four. Okay, so quarterly here means your N is a four if you want to write that down. And then remember, the four goes in two spots. It goes for the bottom N and the top N times how many years is Mary going to wait? Seven. And you can just put that into your calculator. Okay, so that's number two. Point zero six three over 4 up to the 4 times 7. So it should look like that once you typed it in. So the $2,000 would grow to $3,097. And how many cents? 0. 0.86. There we go. If it said continuously, which I'm not going to work out, but I'm going to at least write down the formula. So put over here to the side for continuously. 
what would I change? Would the 2000 still go in the front? Yes. Yes. But the E would be up to the rate times time. So what was my rate? Point oh six three times et cetera. Okay. So this is term up here. And then this is continuously at the bottom. Okay. Questions on that? No? Okay. Um, turn the page. We're going to do two more examples where we're solving for different letters. So if you will, please look at the next example. Go ahead and set up your original equation. Am I good to pull this paper? We all got it. All right, take a look at example three. Mrs. Scott has $3,500 invested into an account at a 5% interest compounded quarterly. How long will it take her account to reach 5,000? Okay, I'm gonna rewrite the original again. Here's what's different. I know how much she's putting down. How much is Mrs. Scott putting down for her principal? 3,500. One plus, what's her interest rate? Give it to me as a decimal, please. 0. 0.05. And then how many times per year if it says quarterly? Four. That would be four times a year. Up to the four times T. Do I know how long I'm gonna have to wait? It says how long, so I'm gonna leave that as a T. And instead of knowing how long we're gonna wait, we know how much she wants it to grow to. How much does she want her account to grow to? That's gonna go here. So it'd be 5,000 equals 3,500, one plus blah, 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 up to the 14. Okay, here's how you're gonna solve it. First thing you're gonna do is take this parentheses and you're gonna turn that into a number. So in the calculator, all I want you to do is put one plus 0.05 over four. We're gonna turn that into a numeric base. Okay, so once you have that number, it should be one plus 0.05 over four, I got 1.0125. Is that what you got? 0.125. Okay, rewrite your equation. And now this is solvable. Let's review the steps. This is my base up to the 40. But what is my base multiplied by? How do I get rid of a multiply by 3,500 in the front? Divide it. So let's divide that across first. I'm going to divide by 3,500 on both sides. So I have 1.0125 to the 4t equals. Let me divide that out here. I got 1.4285. 1 1.4285. Okay, next step, how do I get rid of a big 1.0125? Think about the unit we just finished. Log little 1.0125, right? So if it was an E like last time, we'd LN to get rid of it. But if it's a different base, you log little of whatever that same number is. So I'm gonna log little 1.0125. And then remember, when you log little 1.0125 on a big 1.0125, what happens here? They're going to cancel out, and I'll just have a 14. Now, let's review how to pull that up in the calculator in case you forgot. We remember the buttons. Alpha window, and then option 5 for log base. Okay, now, in the other class, some of the decimals come out kind of ugly. Y'all should know how to do this already, but if you don't, just watch on the calculator. I'm not going to retype these, like, bleep, 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 bleep. just steal the numbers 
and put it in the box. You just push enter on it and it'll automatically take the whole big long decimal for you, okay? So I got 28.7, one, one. And then what are we gonna do with the four to finish solving? Divide. But remember, you're not retyping. You're taking that number and dividing it by four because you don't wanna round until the very, very, very end, okay? So it's 7.17 followed by a seven. So we would round that up to 7.8. Now this is in years. So let's say that it said to round to the nearest year. How many years would that be? Seven years. Okay. Can we do one more like that? All right, try example four. So Mary has $3,400 in an account. Her interest rate was 7% compounded monthly. Okay, so tell me what can I put in for my principal? 3,400 is correct. One plus, what can I put in for my R or my interest rate? 0 0.07 over how many times per year is it compounded? Monthly means your N is a 12. Very good. Okay, then up to the power of 12T. But notice, why am I leaving the T blank? Because how long ago, look what a good speller I am. Okay, how long ago means I'm trying to find the time, right? So it says for her money to double, how much should she have over here if her original 3,400 doubled? 6,800. And then you're just gonna go through and solve the same way. So what am I gonna do first? Take this one plus, turn that into a number. So if you'll do that now for me. So I have 3,400 something to the 12 T. So my base came out to 1.0058. What do I do next? Divide the 3,400 out of the way. You cannot kill that base with the log until that number's gone. So I gotta divide the 3,400 across. What is 6,800 divided by 3,400? Two, because it doubled, so that makes sense. What do I do next to get rid of the big 1.0058? Log. Log what? Log little 1.0058. And then remember, when you do that in the calculator, you're not retyping the number, you're just taking the number from the previous line. So watch. We're going to do alpha window five. And then for the little number, I'm pulling the entire number into that box. Two in the big box. Okay. So I got 119.17 equals 12T. Because remember, when you log little on a big of the same number, those cross out. And then for my last step, how do we get rid of that 12? Take that number and divide. And remember, in the calculator, you're taking the full number divided by 12. So I got 9.93. How many years would that round to? Okay, questions on that? Okay, there's one more type of question that I meant to put in your notes, but I forgot. So instead of doing it in your notes, we're just gonna do one of those off your practice. So I'm gonna bring you scratch paper, go ahead and pull out your Delta Map, and I want you to pick the one that says you're finding the principal. 
You put nine on that floor. Oops. Oh, thank you. That should be ten here. <laughs> we just gotta try to make it casual. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You did it, Jordan. No, if you're gonna go, I didn't work. I'm just kidding. It's I'm still having I'm still having the kid with it. Okay. Uh, so, how do you get rid of the like things? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, and remember so, how to put a detect there? It was a pack of paper. No, A people. Okay, the question we're going to work off your practice is number six. Number six, please. Number six. And it should say solving for principle. This is the only type we hadn't covered already. Number six. Solve for principle, correct. All right, so here's what it says. William is going to invest in an account paying an interest rate of 5.5% compounded monthly. How much would William need to invest to the nearest dollar for the account to reach $980 in seven years? So question, do I know how much he's starting with? Yeah. No, I know how much he wants to end up with, but I don't know his starting amount. So this time P is gonna stay as a letter. So let's write the original equation. So it's gonna be A equals P one plus R over N up to the N T. But my P is going to stay as the unknown because that's the thing this time that I'm missing. Okay, what is my interest rate? 0 0.055, very good. Over. And then what is my number of times per year if it's compounded monthly? So 12. 12 times time. What is my time he's willing to wait? seven years and then this time instead of knowing the principal i know the ending amount or the after amount which is how much 980 is going to go here okay so i want you to look at the way that this one's different than the other one last time we were trying to find t and you remember how t is up top so we had to use a log to get rid of it okay now your p is just a regular p so all that you're going to do is take all of this crap right here and put it into the calculator at once. Everything behind the P. So I'm going to have 980 equals P times something. And we're putting this entire chunk into the calculator at once, including the parentheses and the exponent. So I have 1 plus 0 0.055 over 12 up to the 12 times 7. My number came out to 1.468. 1 1.468. How are the P 
and the 1.468 together? What operation? Multiplication, then how do I undo multiplication? Do I need a log? No, how do you get rid of times? Just divide. So you're going to divide that 1.468 across, and then your P will be by itself. Remember, in your calculator, please use that long form of the decimal. Don't shorten it. So it should be 980 divided by, and then you're going to go back and steal that full decimal. So it comes out to 667. Point four three. Okay. All right, now, the rounding on this assignment is not consistent. If you type that in, it's going to count it wrong, so don't type it in. Okay, it says on your homework, several different options. If it said rounded to the nearest cent, this would be your answer, $667.43, right? Okay, what if it said to the nearest dollar? Six sixty seven. The forty three cents would round down and keep it at six sixty seven, right? Okay. If it says to the nearest ten dollars, then would your six sixty seven round down to six sixty or up to six seventy? Up to six seventy because it's six sixty seven. That's closer to six hundred and seventy, right? How does this one say to round? The nearest, hundred, nearest hundred, not hundred. Hundred means you're either going down to six hundred or up to seven hundred. What is this number closer to? Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Okay, and I apologize for the fact that it's not consistent, but round to hundred equals seven hundred. Okay, so just be careful on your rounding. I'm happy to reset because um, that happened quite a bit in second period. Just be careful with that. And if you need help with that, ask me. Ask me. Next We're still learning. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think Emma said she liked it. <laughs> <laughs> you love that one. Yeah. Okay. Just take the back. Oh, yes. It has when I 